Section. Introduction. In this section, we explore the importance of general learning in both biological and artificial systems, emphasizing that adaptability is crucial for success. We note that artificial systems, like transformers, can utilize the same circuitry for various tasks, such as language and vision, with the main difference being the data they receive. We reference the Mount Castle hypothesis, which suggests that the neocortex in mammalian brains functions as a general learning system, capable of processing both sensory inputs and high-level planning. We provide an example of a beaver raised in captivity that instinctively built a dam using household items, despite never being taught how to do so. This suggests that certain instincts may be hardwired in the brain, with specific modules dedicated to particular tasks. However, we highlight potential issues with this idea, such as how rerouting sensory inputs could disrupt these innate drives. Our main focus in this paper is to investigate how we can replicate similar innate instincts in artificial neural networks. Specifically, we ask how we can embed desired concepts in a system without knowing how a stimulus will be grounded. Each time we train a neural network from scratch, the internal representations it learns differ due to random initialization, making it challenging to create a module that detects a stimulus consistently. We introduce the term, the ungrounded alignment problem, to describe this challenge. We propose that it would be beneficial to have a module for robots that allows them to recognize concepts like trash without relying on specific sensory modalities. In this paper, we take a first step toward this goal by detecting high-level concepts without explicit grounding during the design phase. We outline our contributions, starting with a formalization of the ungrounded alignment problem and a specific instance involving FNORD detection. This involves learning to identify a sequence of images representing certain characters without using labels. We argue that this captures the essence of the broader problem of grounding high-level concepts in unlabeled sensory data. We demonstrate that traditional unsupervised methods fall short in addressing this issue and present our solution, which employs a simple bigram alignment loss function. Our results show that our approach achieves over 99% accuracy in the FNORD detection task, significantly outperforming random guessing. To clarify the problem, we make some assumptions to simplify our setup while maintaining our core focus. We assume that the learner's experience is entirely unsupervised, with no explicit labels provided during training or evaluation. We also assume that environmental conditions remain stable from design to deployment. By addressing the classification problem without labels or specific sensory configurations, we aim to understand how concepts can be innately encoded without grounding or feedback. In summary, we propose a simplified version of the ungrounded alignment problem through FNORD detection, highlighting the challenge of grounding specific concepts using unknown inputs. Section Summary In this section, we introduce the ungrounded alignment problem, which explores how to encode innate instincts in artificial neural networks without relying on explicit labels or grounding during training. We formalize this problem through the specific task of FNORD detection demonstrating that our proposed solution achieves high accuracy in identifying concepts from uninterpreted sensory inputs. Section. The Ungrounded Alignment Problem. In this section, we present a formal version of the ungrounded alignment problem and provide a specific example using the term FNORD for our experiments. We develop a model intended for deployment, which includes a training and testing phase. During training, our model receives a series of high-dimensional observations, where each observation is drawn from a specific high-dimensional space. Each observation corresponds to a letter from a finite alphabet, and the exact mapping function is unknown to us, although we have access to the alphabet and possibly some additional information about the environment. In the testing phase, we introduce a special trigger word made up of letters from the alphabet. The model is presented with a set of words, some of which are instances of the trigger word. When a sequence of observations matches the trigger, the model should respond with a specific innate response, otherwise, it should remain silent. Importantly, we do not provide any feedback on the correctness of the responses, which means the model cannot learn from its mistakes. 
high accuracy is crucial for the model's success in its environment. For our example with FNORD, we assume a passive unsupervised learning system without labels or actions. The model processes a stream of fixed-length vectors representing the 26 letters of the English alphabet, derived from common English texts. We assume the distribution of character sequences remains stable, but we do not know the distribution of the sensor data at the start. We consider our system successful if, after training, a specific node activates only when it detects the correct sequential pattern. In our experiments, we use the trigger word, FNORD, which requires the model to identify a sequence of images representing the letters F, N, O, R, and D, in an unknown font and representation. We utilize images from permuted datasets, ensuring that the model does not rely on seeing the target sequence during training. The model's task is to detect instances of the trigger word in a new stream of test inputs, which come from the same distribution as the training data. We evaluate the model's performance based on its classification accuracy using a balanced test set that includes examples of both the trigger word and non-trigger sequences. We sample images from the EMNIST dataset for training, ensuring that we only include characters without spaces or punctuation. To maintain modality agnostic behavior, we flatten and permute the images, preventing the model from relying on spatial information. We also conduct experiments with images from the CIFAR100 dataset, adjusting the input dimensions accordingly. Throughout training, the model processes a large number of input vectors, but we ensure that the test images are not included in the training data to avoid overfitting. Section Summary In this section, we present the ungrounded alignment problem, detailing a model that learns to detect a specific trigger word, such as FNORD, from high-dimensional observations without any labels or feedback. Our experiments utilize sequences of images representing letters from English texts, ensuring the model remains modality agnostic while aiming for high accuracy in identifying the trigger word in unseen data. Section, a solution. In this section, we focus on our solution, which involves training an unsupervised character encoder to connect a letter image to its correct class label or a probability distribution over all classes. We aim to train this encoder from scratch without using any labels. With this encoder, identifying instances of the trigger word becomes straightforward. However, we face the challenge of mapping to the correct class label without having labels during training. We cannot depend on our understanding of images since they may be altered or presented in unfamiliar fonts. Our task is complex because the system must learn both the mapping of letters and the similarities among them. If we could group the images into 26 clusters that correspond reliably to each letter, we could simplify our mapping problem to solving a basic substitution cipher. Unfortunately, clustering alone often fails to create such a correspondence as images of the same letter can be more different from each other than from images of different letters. For instance, the pixel distance between images of lowercase a and o can be smaller than that between two variations of z. We demonstrate in the appendix that k means clustering on raw emnist images does not yield a one-to-one -one correspondence between clusters and characters. Additionally, any loss function that relies solely on images of individual letters is unlikely to produce a clustering that aligns with the true labels. We show in another section that unigram models perform poorly, even when considering known character frequencies. This situation may seem contradictory. We are training an encoder from scratch without seeing labels, yet we aim for correct class labels. Our approach, inspired by the conceptual web theory, leverages innate knowledge about the relationships among abstract concepts. Specifically, we incorporate hard-coded knowledge of the bigram distribution for characters in English text. Our model uses a known bigram distribution that gives the probability of one character following another. For example, the probability of H following T is about 14%. This bigram distribution remains fixed during the encoder's training. In our experiments, we create a simple lookup table by counting big rams from Wikipedia text. 
We train our encoder from scratch using this fixed bigram probability table and apply a batch contrastive loss, as illustrated in our figures. We define our alignment loss function based on three components the encoder that maps images to class probabilities, our bigram distribution, and two sequential letter images. This loss function compares the predicted classes for the second image from the encoder with those predicted by the bigram table, based on the first image's class distributions. We denote the class probabilities predicted by the encoder for the first image as E. The bigram's predicted probability for the second image being a specific character is derived from the bigram table. Ideally, the outputs from the bigram table and the encoder should match. We use a batch contrastive loss to maximize the information that the bigram distribution provides about the encoder's predictions. We recognize that relying solely on single character approaches, like matching a single character distribution, is inadequate for distinguishing characters with similar frequencies. For instance, L and H have nearly identical prior probabilities, making it difficult to differentiate them. We present empirical results for such models in another section. Another potential method is to match the batch distribution for big RAMs using a specific loss function, but we show that this approach led to poorer performance, particularly for EMNIST. Section Summary In this section, we describe our approach to training an unsupervised character encoder that maps letter images to class labels without using labels during training. We leverage hard-coded bigram distributions from English text to guide the encoder's learning process, employing a batch contrastive loss to align the predicted class probabilities with the bigram probabilities, ultimately improving the accuracy of character recognition despite challenges in clustering and label correspondence. Section Model and Optimization In this section, we describe our model and optimization process. Our encoder takes an input image and classifies it into one of 26 categories. It consists of a straightforward two-layer feedforward network with biases, ReLU activations, and a softmax output. Specifically, it has 784 inputs leading to 64 hidden units and then to 26 outputs, while for CIFAR, it has 3,072 inputs. The encoder has just over 50,000 parameters for EMNIST and 200,000 for CIFAR. We use the same encoder to process each image during optimization in our bigram model. Although the encoder is simple, the optimization process was complicated due to local optima. To address this, we performed 64 random restarts and chose the model with the lowest training loss. We also created a basic FNORD detector that calculates the sum of log probabilities for specific letters in a sequence. It reports, true, if this sum exceeds a predetermined threshold. This threshold is based on the expected probability of the trigger appearing. During testing, we set the threshold so that the proportion of true results aligns with this expected probability. We found that the optimal threshold differs significantly between EMNIST and CIFAR, being around 1,000th per character for EMNIST and 1 10 millionth for CIFAR. Importantly, setting this threshold does not rely on labeled data but rather on the frequency of the target's appearance. The detector is innate and not adjusted during training, as we do not have labels indicating the presence of FNORD. In our experiments, we compiled a training set of about 2 million characters into a single batch. Our bigram models processed this as 1 million pairs, while unigram models treated it as 2 million individual characters. For reliability, we report the average and standard error of results from 10 different training and test splits. Our main finding is that our model effectively detected FNORD. We tested it with 10,000 sequences of the trigger FNORD and other non-trigger strings from the Wikipedia test set, achieving over 99% accuracy on EMNIST and 85% on CIFAR, where random accuracy would be 50%. We also evaluated the model's robustness with other trigger words, sampling 2,000 triggers of varying lengths. We found that some triggers were completely absent from the training text, while others were common.
we present the average test accuracy for these triggers in our results. Additionally, we examined the performance of two unigram models, which used losses based on KL divergence. The first model could minimize loss by ignoring input, while the second included a contrastive loss term to prevent this issue, but it still fell short, possibly due to frequency symmetries. We also assessed the untuned classification accuracy of our encoders on the EMNIST and CIFAR26 datasets, predicting classes based on the highest logit. The classes in the test set are evenly distributed, so random guessing yields about 3.85% accuracy. Our encoders achieved 82.14% accuracy on EMNIST and 23.08% on CIFAR26, which, while lower than state-of-the-art models, is impressive given that our model had no labels or structural information about the characters. We also trained an Oracle model with the same architecture, and our model performed comparably on balanced EMNIST classification, despite being trained with a different objective. The poor performance of the Unigram models aligns with our earlier results. Section Summary In this section, we describe our encoder, a simple two-layer feedforward network that maps input images to 26 classes, and detail our optimization strategy, which includes using 64 random restarts to avoid local optima. Our model achieved over 99% accuracy on EMNIST and 85% on CIFAR for detecting the trigger word, FNORD, while also demonstrating competitive character classification performance despite lacking labels or structural information. Section Related Work In this section, we build upon a substantial body of work related to unsupervised loss functions, self supervised learning, and representational alignment. Generally, both unsupervised and self-supervised methods utilize in-labeled data to learn representations that can be beneficial for tasks like classification, generation, or control. For instance, methods like JEPA and Bootstrap your own latent learn representations that, when combined with a supervised fine-tuning layer, achieve impressive accuracy in image classification. However, these methods still rely on some labeled data to align raw inputs with class labels. Our approach differs because we operate under the assumption that there is no external teacher or labels once the model is deployed. Most research on cross-modal alignment presumes the availability of parallel data or simultaneous presence of both modalities. For example, some work demonstrates a system that learns aligned representations of vision and text by using co-occurrence statistics to inform an alignment loss. However, this requires observing both modalities at the same time while our method only assumes the presence of visual data. We also consider relevant work on aligning non-parallel data, where systems align word embeddings from different languages using a linear model to minimize the difference between their embedding spaces. This method, however, is not directly applicable to our case since we map pixel data to embeddings, leading to an unbounded input size. We recognize that our contributions serve as a proof of concept, showing that a system can be modality agnostic while still having detectable high-level concepts from a newly trained network. As computational power and data availability grow, systems that are more adaptable may become more effective than rigid systems. We hope our work will inspire further exploration into the concept of innateness in intelligent systems, such as the origins of social drives in humans. Looking ahead, we acknowledge that our work is in its early stages and there are many questions to address. We plan to test the robustness of our approach with a wider range of modalities beyond the examples provided. It would be valuable to explore how our system performs with different datasets and languages. Additionally, we need to consider how to develop relational representations for larger domains, as our current method may not scale well. We also contemplate the possibility of replacing our n-gram model with a predictive model, like a pre-trained language model, but this presents challenges due to the nature of our loss function. We aim to find a more efficient optimization strategy, as our current approach is costly and not always effective. Lastly, we are interested in extending our work to create control systems with innate drives, such as a robot designed to pick up trash, which could be a fascinating direction for future research. 
Section Summary In this section, we discuss how our work builds on existing literature in unsupervised and self-supervised learning, emphasizing our unique approach that operates without external labels or simultaneous modality observations. We also outline future research directions, including testing our method across broader modalities and exploring the scalability of our innate n-gram model for more complex tasks. Section Acknowledgements In this section, we would like to express our gratitude to Aditya Vempathy, Mike Moser, Ravi Kaku, Ashish Jagmohan, Paul Haley, Tim Oates, Amol Nayate, and Rob Goldstone for their valuable discussions. We especially thank Jeremy Hartman for reviewing multiple drafts of this paper.